Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to go through question number four from this June 2020 paper. Question number four. All right, uh, this question here is about probability. It says the events H and W are such that the probability of H is equal to 3 over 8, and the probability of H union W is equal to 3 quarters. Given that H and W are independent, show that the probability of W is equal to three-fifths. Okay, so now, in this case, like in many questions in probability, we get an S1. We have absolutely no idea what H, the event H and the event W actually stand for. We've just given this um, question about probability in its notation form. So we do have to understand, um, you know, something about the notation of uh, probability for us to answer such questions. It's not just a case of given a question and we can use some sort of common sense here we have no idea what these events stand for or anything like that so here there's a few important points the f the most the key for this particular question is this statement that h and w are independent now what does that mean well what it means when you have independent events the probability of one occurring and then the other which is like their um, intersection is equal to the probability of their separate um, the, the the product of their separate probability. So the probability of H intersection W is going to be the probability of H multiplied by, by the probability of W. Okay, that's what we know when they're independent. If they're not independent, then you cannot say that. Okay, if one depends on the other, then you know, it will be the probability of H times the probability of W given H. In this case, um, they're going to be um, probability of H times the probability of W. Okay, now, it says, show that the probability of W is equal to three-fifths. So what we know, and I'm going to draw a Venn diagram to kind of illustrate the reason behind this. If we have two events, okay, we have these two events, H and W. Okay, we know the probability of H union W. We're, we're told that. The probability of H union W. Now, the probability of H union W is a probability, the total probability of everything inside this circle. So we know that that's equal to th uh, three quarters. Right? Now, the probability of everything inside this circle is equal to the probability of H, which is all of this, plus the probability of W, which is all of this, now, the problem with that is we have counted this section twice. The intersection has been counted twice because we took the probability of H and then the probability of W. So we got to take away that intersection, okay, then it will be only counted once. So we've got to take away the intersection with the probability of H and W, and that's what the probability of H union W is going to be given by. Now, because the H and W are independent, we can replace this with the probability of H times the probability of W. So I can say that the probability of H union W is equal to the probability of H plus the probability of W minus the product of the probability of H times the probability of W. Now, from these, what we have is everything except the probability of W, which we have to find. So the probability of H union W is 3 quarters, so I can replace this with 3 quarters, equals the probability of H is 3 eighths, plus the probability of W, which we have to find, minus the probability of H, which is 3 eighths, times the probability of W. So we have one unknown. This is an equation that we can now solve quite easily. What I can do is multiply everything by 8. That will get rid of the fraction. So if I multiply this by 8, I'm going to get... Uh, 2 times 3, which is 6. If I multiply this by 8, I'll get 3. If I multiply this by 8, I'll get 8 times the probability of W. This by 8, I'm getting a minus 3 times the probability of W. So we're almost there. I'll just make a bit of space here. What I can do here now is I can subtract 3 from both sides. I'm left with 3 equals, and I can subtract these two. That's going to give me 5 times the probability of W. So therefore, we can say the probability of W is equal to 3 over five three fifths and that's exactly what we had to show show that the probability of w is equal to three fifths okay so there's part a done then it says the event the event n is such that 
the probability of n is one fifth and the probability of h intersection n is equal to the probability of n and we know that the probability of h is given to us as three eighths okay we've got to probably find the probability of n complement given h okay so how do we do this well there's um basically what what this means is this is the probability of the intersection of n complement and h divided by the probability of h what it means is you're basically limiting your solution set to just h and you're finding the probability what's the probability of not n okay within h so basically if we look at this this here is key this part here the probability of h intersection n is equal to the probability of n what does that mean well what that means is if we made a venn diagram and this is uh, say this is uh, h now n it must be completely inside h because the probability of h intersection n is equal to the probability of n so that means the intersection between h and n n must be completely inside h then because for example if if h was all the numbers from 1 to 10 and n was the say the even numbers okay then the probability of h h intersection n all the numbers from 1 to 10 that are even would be all of this circle there'd be nothing so the, basically the intersection between these two if if you have the probability of two things intersection is equal to the probability of one of those that one must be completely contained within the other okay so this is um, how this can um, be written down or, or shown and we know that this is 1 over 15 okay um, we therefore can work out what is going to be in this area over here this donut part because we know the probability of h is 3 eighths and what what we've got here is the probability this area here is the probability of this is the probability of n complement intersection h that means it's outside of n but it's inside of h that's what this part is here okay that's what we're finding the probability of and that is equal to the probability of h minus the probability of n in this case why because it's going to be the part that's outside of n but inside of h so it's all of h except for this part so that's going to be 3 eighths take away 1 over 15 that's going to be this area over here which is not our final answer so let's just work out that's 3 eighths take away 1 over 15 which gives us 37 over 120 37 over 120 that is the probability of this of it lying in this region however what we found is this part that's 37 over 110 20 we got to divide it by the probability of h so we get the probability of n complement given h is equal to 37 over 120 divided by the probability of h which is 3 eighths and that will give us our answer so you have 37 over 120 multiplied by 8 over 3 so if we just multiply this by 8 we can just say divided by um, 3 eighths and we'll see we'll get this answer which is 37 over 45 so 37 over 45 is the probability of n complement given h 37 over 45 so what we found was this area here which is between h and n its probability of something landing there is 37 over 120 that was 37 over 120 and the probability outside of this is going to be uh two eighths two eighths because that's three sorry five eighths not what I'm talking about probability of this will be five eighths because it's going to add up to the probability of all of h is three eighths this is five eighths that's one over 15 that's 37 we don't have to show this diagram but this diagram helps us to picture what's happening okay it's always a good idea to draw a diagram Venn diagrams really helps in these type of questions okay now for part c now given that w and n are mutually exclusive another very important word so we're given a new um, letter n it says given that w and n are mutually exclusive draw a venn diagram to represent the events h w and n giving the exact probabilities of each region in the venn diagram okay so this is the information that we got from the previous parts of the question 
We also know the probability of um, N complement given H was 37 over 120, was it? Yeah, 37 over 120. Uh, no. Yeah, that was... No, that wasn't that. That was the... the that was the probability of the given... The probability of N complement intersection H, sorry. N complement in, N intersection H, that was 37 over 120. Okay, so now, with this information, I think we can now complete this Venn diagram that we're supposed to draw. So let's just make it a, quite a large Venn diagram so we can write the probabilities clearly. If you use a ruler and a compass for this, it might even be better. But we know that we've definitely got H and N is inside, completely inside H, as we talked about before. This is 1 over 15. And the area um, between H and N was 37 over 120, this area over here. We also have um, W, which is, uh, sorry, we have a W, which is a new, um, sorry, we now have, um, was it N, sorry, N. Sorry, this was N. Yeah, this N. I've written it as N. We also have W. W is a new letter. Sorry about that. Yeah, W is a new letter. And we're told that W and N are mutually exclusive. Okay, so that means W and N, when they're mutually exclusive, what it means is there's no intersection between them. Okay, this would be W and this would be N. There's no intersection. Mutually exclusive means when one happens, there's no chance of the other one happening. For example, um, w and N could be um, in a pack of cards, spades and diamonds. Or W and N could be distributed odd numbers and even numbers. There's no intersection between the odd numbers and even numbers, for example. So that's how you draw the Venn diagrams for W and N. Okay, so we're told that W and N have no intersection. Okay, but uh, we know that... Um, what do we have here? Okay, so we don't have any other information apart... From that, okay. So what we can do is you can draw, we can draw W over here. Okay, so there is an intersection maybe between H and W, but there's no intersection between W and N for sure. Okay, so what do we know here? Um, we know the probability of H is 3 eighths, so all of this is 3 eighths. The probability of H union W is 3 quarters, so the whole thing here is three quarters. That means there's one quarter outside of these two circles. The probability of W is three fifths. So that all of this circle is three fifths. And the probability of N is one over 15. Okay. So we know that this section here is 37 over 120. Okay. And we also know that the intersection between H and W, which we know there's an intersection, uh, which we found in the last part of the question, H intersection... Um, w, we can actually find that, actually, okay, we can find the probability of H intersection uh, W, is, yeah, the, the, the intersection between H and W is the probability of H times the probability of W, as we learnt in the earlier part of the question because we're told that the H and W are independent. So it's going to be 3 8 times 3 fifths. That's 3 8 times 3 fifths. So that's 3 over 8 times 3 over 5. That's going to give you 9 over 40. Okay, so the intersection between them, its probability is 9 over 40. Let's make this a bit, a bit bigger. So that it can look a bit clearer when you write the numbers in. So this is H. And this is W. So this is 9 over 40, the intersection between H and W. Okay, so that leaves for W, okay, just W alone. That's going to be the whole of W, which is the probability of W is 3 fifths minus 9 over 40. That's going to be this section here. Okay, so that's going to be times 8, that's 40, times 8, 24, minus 9 over 40. Let's just put that in the calculator, no problem. So we have 3 fifths. Take away 9 over 40. Okay, that gives us 3 eighths. So this is 3 eighths in this section here. Okay, and we know that the probability of all of H is 3 eighths. So what we're looking for, this section here, is going to be basically um, 
3 eighths minus 1 over 15 minus 9 over 40. So this whole circle, take away these two parts, um, which is going to equal what? So we've got 3 eighths minus, so that's the same as this answer here, so minus 1 over 15, whoops, 1 over 15, and take away 9 over 40. And that gives us 1 twelfth. So there's 1 twelfth in this section here. So that has got everything in, in the Venn diagram shown. And we can check to see if um, our answer for this was correct. Let's see. If I take um, the probability of n complement intersection h, which is this donut shape here, and take away from it 9 over 40, I should get 1 twelfth. So if, just to check that answer from another angle, see if it works. So I know that the area of this whole section, the probability of this whole section was 37 over 120. That's that donut part. If I take away from it this intersection, it should give me 1 twelfth. So minus 9 over 40. Yeah, okay, so I've kind of like checked the, the answer for this using this part of the question. So we have now filled in the whole of this um table okay so there's the answer um for this question of it's not that neat but it will do all right so n and w are mutually exclusive there's no intersection between them the probability of h intersection w is 9 over 40 as we know because they're independent so the probability of their separate probabilities is um the product of the probabilities is equal to the intersection therefore we can find what this is it's going to be the probability of w minus this intersection and we know this is 1 over 15, we know this is 9 over 40, so the probability of, of this area here, excluding these two bits, is 3 eighths, which is the whole thing, minus 1 over 15, minus 9 over 40, and the probability of H union W together was 3 quarters, that means there must be a quarter outside. And if we will make a final check to make sure all of these separate probabilities must add up to 1, if they don't, then there's something wrong. So let's see, 1 twelfth plus... 1 over 15, and this is how you can check your answer in the exam, all right? Like, for example, now, when I'm doing this paper at the moment, there's no mark scheme for it, it's not, it's not out yet, at the time when I made the video, which is way before I upload it, because I upload it when the papers are available on the website now. So um, that's why this is done way in advance. Now, but there's no mark scheme out, so I'm just checking. If these add up to 1, then I know, you know, it's like an indication that I've got it correct, so I can be rest assured. And that's how you can check your answers in the exam if you get time. So 1 12th plus 1 over 15 plus 9 over 40 plus 3 eighths plus a quarter. If that equals 1, then we're okay. Okay, good. They add that up to 1, so it seems like we, we've done it correctly. And that concludes question number 4 from this June 2020 S1 paper from International A-Level. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this region here. Other questions from the topic of probability from S1 can be found in the playlist which will appear over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.